What's up guys, Zoll here, and today I want to talk about something that I think is really important and something that sometimes gets swept under the rug, and also something I've just been getting a lot of questions about, and that is research. Research is something that everybody seems to talk about, and no one really describes the important stuff about research, so I wanted to make this one video to talk about why research is important, how to get into research, what research is like, is it hard? all the things I can think about in all of my experience doing research, talking to other chemistry and STEM majors about research, and even talking to professors. So first things first, I want to start off with why research is important, because, you know, why do something if you don't know why it's important? So the number one thing, and I think the most important thing to talk about with why research is important, is the fact that when you take all of these classes in your major and you are in these labs in your physics or chemistry labs that you're doing, you aren't actually doing actual lab work. It's kind of hard to explain, but actual research and all is nothing like what you do in those labs. A lot of those labs are just about teaching you basic lab techniques and basic concepts. And you're spending all this money and time and effort to get this major, you kind of want to know if you're going to like the career that this major has to offer you, and getting into research is the easiest way to see what actual real-world science is like. Taking your classes and doing the labs that are part of those classes is nothing like real-world science, and it may turn out that you love your chemistry classes and those labs you're doing, but you hate doing research, and you know, at that point, you might need to consider if a job in chemistry or whatever STEM major you're in is for you, because really a lot of stuff, if you're going into a hard science field, is going to be doing research and lab work like you do if you're going to get into research at school. The second most important part about research is having been in research is probably the best possible thing you can do for any application. When jobs are hiring you, when grad schools are hiring you, etc., they don't really care about your classes. I mean, to an extent they care about your classes. Please don't go and fail all your classes. But here's the thing. Every single chem major that graduates across the whole world is going to have taken the same sort of classes you have, and that doesn't really differentiate you. What really does differentiate you is if these grad schools where you're going to be doing research or these jobs where you're going to be in the lab all day know that you work well in the lab, and that is what research is. It's just working in a lab, and if you can prove by having been in research for years and maybe even published a paper, which is like a golden ticket, if you can prove that you work well in the lab, you get stuff done, and you can actually work in a scientific environment, that is the biggest possible boost to any grad application or job application, etc. in the future. It basically counts as experience. A lot of people, if they've been in research for years in college, you can mark that down on a resume as years of experience working in a lab, and that is a huge advantage in when you graduate. Lastly, the thing I want to talk about is you learn some basic stuff in classes, you learn some basic stuff in the labs, and it is nothing like some of the stuff you learn in research, because the stuff you learn in research gets really specialized when you're working under a professor and with PhD students and all. You're learning about their research at the highly academic PhD level, and you get a lot of stuff you would never ever learn in classes and a lot of cool experiences and techniques that you do in those labs that you would never touch in a normal undergrad class lab. And this is both fun, fulfilling, and it can really, really give you an edge when you're going out into the real world. So now that I've explained why research is important, I want to get into the parts of actually getting into research and who can do research and all. So let's start off with who can do research because this is a really simple answer and it is anyone. Any person can do research. Whether you are a freshman who have just come in and not taken any chem classes, you can still do research. And this is kind of confusing to a lot of people because a lot of people think, it's like, I've only gotten through my freshman chemistry classes or my sophomore chemistry classes. Why would a professor want me in their lab? And the funny thing about this is that 
a lot of the stuff you do in lab is so specialized and so different from a lot of the classes that although those classes might help you, a lot of the times professors actually like people who aren't super close to graduating because that means they can train them in all the very specific stuff of their lab and they have a lot more years to be working in that lab and learning about the techniques and information that lab uses and kind of shape them into a great kind of part and gear in how this lab works. A lot of the times it can actually be harder for a senior to get into a lab because even if they have all this chem knowledge or science knowledge from their major, once they're a senior, it, they're going to have that year of training in the specifics of lab and all that knowledge you learn in classes and labs isn't going to help you and you know they're going to spend all that time training a senior and they're going to immediately graduate. So it's actually a lot of the times an advantage if you're trying to get into a lab or research early as a lower classman. So really as soon as you possibly can get into a lab. Not only will you figure out real quick if you like science, it also means you can spend even more years working in a lab with a professor, get better recommendations, and learn the lab even better than an upperclassman that's trying to get into research. So now that you know that literally anyone can get into research and you shouldn't gatekeep yourself into getting to research, we kind of get into that how. How do you actually get into a research lab? Because this isn't something that you can go easily sign up on when you're signing up with the rest of your classes or it's listed in your major requirements. And this is way easier and way less complicated than people think. I have done this myself, I've watched plenty of my friends do it, and it is simple as going on your school's website, looking through if they have a list of all the professors and their research topics and labs, go read through all of those, figure out the labs that interest you, and a big mistake people make is you don't need to do research in your major. I'm actually not doing research in my major. I'm doing research in an applied science department that has a combination of biology, physics, chemistry, and all the STEM majors. You don't have to do research in just your department. And a lot of the times this can be even more fulfilling because you're going to be learning a whole slew of sciences from other fields and meeting other majors. And it's really awesome. So look at any research that interests you. Um, go make a list of the professors that interest you. Get their contact information. And it's simple as email them. Email saying, hey, I'm this undergrad looking for an opportunity to get into a research lab. Give them your interests about the lab. Sometimes on their websites, they'll actually list a kind of a guideline if undergrads are looking to get to the lab of what sort of information to send them, but do whatever they list first, of course. But it's simple as emailing them all your interests, why you want to be in their lab. You know, talk to them. They'll shoot you an email back eventually, and you know, sometimes a lot of these professors will just have full labs. There's plenty of people already working them. They don't have space. They'll let you know that. No hard feelings. But a lot of the times they'll say, hey, we have a spot in our undergrad lab love to meet you. Um, let's kind of meet up, talk this over, have a little interview, and go from there. And it's easy as that. It's easy as emailing professors about their labs that you're interested in and seeing if they have a spot for undergrad research. Don't let this overwhelm you. Just find your list of professors and email them. So once you're actually in your research, what's it like and how hard is it? Well, Research can be really difficult at times, but I don't want that to dissuade you because it's not difficult in the same way that classes are. A lot of the times in classes, the difficulty comes from just studying for hours and hours and trying to understand new concepts. Well, the difficulty in research is much more hands-on. Research, when you're in those labs, you're not just given a procedure to do. You're the one making those procedures and you're trying to find out information and you have to figure out ways to solve these problems you're running into completely from scratch. So you could be sitting in this lab, stuff's just not working. You're the one who has to work through a new way to create this procedure and make these samples properly. And sometimes that's just trial and error. 
Sometimes that's browsing your computer for research papers that have been published and seeing if anyone has done anything similar that you can apply to your lab. It's a different type of difficulty. I personally love it. I love it way more than actual classes. I think it involves a lot more critical thinking and problem solving, and it's really a glimpse into real science. So research is hard, I won't lie to you, and it can be time consuming, but the fulfillment you get, the stuff you learn, and the huge boost to all your resumes is astronomically worth it. So with that, I hope you guys liked the video, and I'll see you next time.